It was a perfect February Friday for chasing trains in Jacksonville. Sunshine, 70 degrees. A big storm had come through the day before and left a clear blue sky. I was getting a late start and here at Beaver Street interlocking, the shadows were getting low. We're looking south off the Beaver Street overpass. The yard to the left is TTX, the giant boxcar and intermodal leasing company, their repair yard, once a tiny part of the giant Jacksonville terminal yards. The signals cleared for Amtrak 98, the northbound Silver Meteor. Up it came around the tight curve into Duke's Crossing and the Beaver Street plant. He's running at 25 miles per hour through this complicated interlocking. Then he can speed up for three miles past the Atlantic Coastline Moncrief Yard before his station stop and recrew at the Jack's Amtrak station. There's no crossing anymore at Duke's Crossing, but the name sticks because there were two diamonds here for terminal tracks that crossed the ACL main to access the industrial and warehouse customers to the west. The diamonds were removed sometime around 1999. I moved down on the ground at Duke's Crossing to see a transfer move. This is a crew up from the Florida East Coast Railway and bringing back a shortcut of container traffic for its Bowden Yard across the big St. Johns River. The FEC gets traffic from both the CSX and Norfolk Southern. As sunset approached, the northbound signal at Duke's Crossing lit up with an approach medium on the number one track. Proceed, approaching next signal, not exceeding medium speed. The signal was for Auto Train, Amtrak 52. waved at the passengers on board, wishing I were with them. As passenger trains go, Auto Train is different from them all. It only serves two stations, Sanford, Florida and Lorton, Virginia, and has no stops other than a crew change and service stop in Florence, South Carolina. AT is the only Atlantic Coast service that uses superliner cars, and it's the only passenger train in America that's half freight train, auto racks on the rear. Auto Train is the premium rail fanning catch in North Florida. It's common to hear train watchers say, I want to be there in time for Auto Train, or we're staying in Folkestone until Auto Train passes. I stayed at Dennis Street until Auto Train passed, then drove out Normandy Boulevard to Sam's St. John's Seafood, got takeout fish and shrimp, and ate it while negotiating the Friday night traffic back to the tracks. I was back at Dennis Street when the crossing signals lit up again. It was Q455, nightly mixed merchandise out of Waycross Yard to Taft Yard, Orlando. I hardly ever shoot trains at night because there's no good light. Sodium pressure streetlights are a terrible artificial red color and cameras don't know how to handle it. But tonight, the light in this area caught my attention. It was white, almost daylight color. Jacksonville has replaced many of their sodium streetlights with LEDs, brighter and more natural color. If there'd been two more of these lights here, Q456 would have been lit beautifully. What has not changed in this area are the surroundings. It's still industrial and much of it abandoned. I strongly advise against rail fanning the Beaver Street, Dennis Street area at night. So I skedaddled. Saturday morning, I left the hotel and drove up to Densmore, north on the A-Line, to see what was happening, and caught, by coincidence, northbound Q456, Orlando Taft to Waycross. At one time, 456 was a massive freight, regularly 8,000 feet or more, 
but business has either dropped off or is going into Orlando from the south side on other trains. This morning, 456 is about 4,500 feet. The rest of my Saturday was spent at the big Jacksonville train show, and I spent too much money on stuff I didn't need. Except this, Doug Riddell's brand new book, Auto Train. This is a hardcover work with a story of Auto Train from its beginning to now, and absolutely packed with vintage photos, advertisements, and stories from railroaders who ran it, staff who worked on it, and the people who repaired it. This was the hottest seller at the train show, but you can get a copy on the ACL and SAL Historical Society's website at www.aclsal.org store. It should be available very soon. I went to Folkestone on Sunday and spent most of the day catching up with old friends instead of shooting all the action. I did catch a couple of interesting mixed freights. Around 4 o'clock, this northbound Q652, another monster Tampa to Waycross beast. 220 cars, 13,075 feet. For an even longer Q652, check out last week's video on my YouTube channel and subscribe while you're at it. With the sun setting and light fading, I called it a day and hit the four-hour road back home. On the Jacksonville Railfan Weekend at milepost A602, this is Danny Harmon, out.